Hello viewers, Super GT here. Last week I logged onto Grand Remo 7 and I found a rather competitive lobby. It was actually a very difficult lobby to do well in, which is normally a good thing. Let's jump in, shall we? Let me explain. Now, we're driving Monza, but this isn't any ordinary Monza. This is a very special edition of Monza. Now, normally we face a fair amount of carnage around, around this circuit, especially into the first chicane. But on this occasion, there is no first chicane because the first chicane isn't being a chicane today. As you can see, it's over there, but we're gonna go straight through. Uh, so the chicane isn't a chicane. We go through Curva Grande, which is now the first corner of the circuit, coming through at 175 miles an hour. As we approach the Della Roja chicane, which now becomes the first chicane. Have I said chicane enough times in this video? I think I have. On the exit here, um, a bit of a kerfuffle between some of the drivers here. I'm going to follow Mohammed through. Actually a decent start here. Into Lesmo 1. We're going to gain two positions at the start of this race. But that's pretty much, I would say. Yeah, I'd say that is about where all the good driving ends, really, in this race. So let's progress forward to uh, lap number 4. This is where it all goes horrifically wrong. As um, Well, I spot my breaking point just before the 150 board it wasn't enough boom we caused a bit of a ricochet effect and before you know it Mohammed has been absolutely murdered it was more like a scene off of a snooker table as I forced another car off the track getting a penalty doing my best Ronnie O'Sullivan impression later on we drift wide and we have a rendezvous with Barry R and this was the last pixel of the race quite a tragic and traumatic scene but let's jump into race number two. Hopefully we can uh, have a bit more luck in this one. Starting 13th. We get ourselves a penalty, serve it. This was a good moment. Up the inside of one. And then just nip our way up the inside of the second. Two positions in one corner. Pretty nice. Going past the Spaniard here and the Mustang. But then there's a bit of rolls reversal here. As we get punted wide at the Della Roger. We teleport back in time. And uh, before you know it, you're, you're back in the main menu. Funny how that happens sometimes. How about race number three? Well, we jump into the chat. Actually, I think it looks like this guy... I mean, tell me if I'm wrong. I think he's wishing us a good afternoon. Not quite sure, though. But please do let me know if, if that's the case. Now, again, starting 13th. And I think this highlights the competitive nature of this race. Because... In the lead, we have YouTube Sensation, the key 25. Uh, always a quick guy on the game. And then throughout the pack, there was very fast drivers. In fact, behind me, we have Romero and Will Murdoch, both very fast indeed. So the depth of the field was very high, lots of very fast players. Um, it was very, very difficult, therefore, to, to move forward and finish well in a lobby of this stature should we say now just sort of staying true to super gt form there getting ourselves a nice track limit penalty early doors in the race i promised myself we was going to do a good job in this one and already we've messed it up and we've, we've yeah there we go grinding across the side of barry r and quite tragically finding ourselves p16 dead last serving the penalty we go through someone sideways. So I guess I'm not last anymore. But I am a long way away from my disappearing opponents. As you can see there. Those pixels getting smaller and smaller. As they drive off into the distance. So I'm essentially last. Bar one. Although that player quits eventually. And then there's a big group up in front. So I think well okay. There is a chance I could try and catch up here. And that kind of happens here on lap three. Rory there having some sort of incident through the, through the Della Roger. Uh, dirty tyres, we've got up the inside into Lesmo 1. So I felt like, okay, this is certainly a very big pinch point on this track. As you can see, big group of four cars in front. We catch right back up before getting ourselves another penalty. Uh, a shameful display of uh, track limit violations here by Super GT. Quite horrific. And I find myself back in last, which seems to be Oh, well, I seem to have some sort of magnetic attraction to this position at the moment. 
and uh, it just shows you any little mistakes in this kind of caliber of a lobby and boom before you know it you'll bring it up the rear of the field this driver here gets end uh, ends up in the in the gravel and it was the same guy who's wishing us all a good afternoon so i guess he's no longer having a good afternoon himself but uh, what a self selfless act there to wish everyone else a good afternoon and then take the hit himself absolutely commendable stuff uh, so thankfully as a result of that i'm no longer last but we're trying to catch up with the with the group here eventually on lap number eight it, it actually happened we have a nice little drag race against the supra very long straight here at monza when you don't have to do the first chicane full throttle for a good maybe 30 seconds eventually we catch back up with this pack here p12 but look how many cars there are in this group one two three four five i'm the sixth car in this group so anything could happen here is we have two laps remaining there's positions to be gained here we could certainly get inside the top 10 should things go to plan which they definitely haven't so far into parabolica final corner of the monza circuit and um looks a bit like noah's ark there momentarily two by two formation then we form into a single file line coming down the main straight it's all about that slipstream here in um, uh, on the main straight at Monza very very long indeed as we hurtle towards Curva Grande at a rather staggering speed of 180 miles per hour on the way in here very very fast indeed the Italian there getting uh, run slightly wide on his home home race looking to the outside not the best place to really go for this i'm you know i'm not really going to go for that let's uh, be nice and careful and unfortunately we have a bit of a ricochet effect on the exit spaniel goes ends up going very slowly we're up the inside into lesmo one gaining the position and then this group as you can see just a couple of corners and it spreads out a little bit and uh it's like a, a driver here serving a penalty we move up one more position into p10 is there any potential here to get a few more positions i suppose given how bad this race started dropping down countless positions and finishing here ultimately in p10 i suppose it wasn't too bad of a recovery and looking at the times i was only about two seconds away from p6 uh, so after you know that was actually quite encouraging after all of those incidents penalties crashes whatever to not be too far away from a p6 after i started well down the grid that's not too bad now this kind of shows you how competitive this this race was um the top 100 actually 180 people did a time um 137 or below and um i decided i i had to kind of try and match that to try to qualify a little bit higher up on the grid so that's what we did and i found out where i was kind of a little bit slow exit, exit of lesmo 2 you can see that the, the, the ghost card just pulling away slightly I think I was in the wrong gear on the exit. Did improve my time to 37.3, but we're trying to target a 36.9 ideally. Anything below a 37. The through here really is about carrying the speed and getting the exit speed. As you can see, don't really get the exit speed, the ghost pulling away. So just taking all this data in, just trying to learn what you're doing wrong, what you are actually doing right, which in my case wasn't much at this point. But you, um, you can see here getting a much better line through the first chicane keeping up with the ghost this time around and then through the lesmos i mean these corners do flow quite nicely but i was actually not the best through lesmo too I'm not sure about the line the breaking point it's quite a tricky corner to get right and you see they're just losing quite a lot of time this ended up being my fastest lap of this session i was actually all right through this corner here the Ascara chicane actually probably a little bit quicker than the ghost on the exit as you see i think i was gaining slightly there eventually doing a 37.2 I knew that I could have done a 36, but it just would have required quite a lot more time, which I didn't quite have. And you can see here the competitiveness of this lobby, because the top five are all in 36s, so they're all within the top 180 in the world. And a lot of them a lot higher than that. I think the guy in the lead is an alt account of someone well inside the top five on the leaderboard. So that guy making a mistake, we're going to move up a position into P8. And yes, this lobby, it just turned out to be a very competitive one. The, the times were very, the standard was fairly high. And therefore, it was just very difficult to really uh, make up positions because you're up against a very high caliber of player, which, you know what, I like that. I, I really want that to be a recurring theme in Grand Turismo 7. It's always good to see a lot of um, 
high, highly rated players and, and to be able to race against them. On this occasion, start of P9, now in P8, are behind Momos of all people. Will we encounter the Momo experience, the Monza edition, this time about? That's the key question that we all want to ask. Uh, so at the end of lap one, P8, a bit of a gap there to two Momos, courtesy really of that little incident on the chicane, lap number one. But here I found myself 1.3 seconds behind Momos. I'm like, you know what, that's not an impossible gap to pull in. Just need to gain about half a second. If I could do that half a second, then we're in the slipstream range, which is where you want to be. And uh, by this point here, under one second, we ha we've actually gained a couple of tenths through Lesmo 2. So I must be driving that corner a little bit better, or Momos is driving it worse. One of the two. Through the Ascara chicane, I was getting this line okay over the bump, and then really commit to that last apex. And then boom, I was within seven tenths of a second. We're in the slipstream. That's exactly what we want. We're going to pull away now from the car behind. I start gaining on the car in front. I do need to get this final corner correct, though. Otherwise, I will lose the tow. And this is the most crucial point on the circuit, I would say, for getting in slipstream range. You're now about to be on a straight line for about 30 seconds. We're going to whip it forward, as you can see. About six steps behind at the beginning of the straight. I was right on the edge of slipstream. But then by the end of it, in the same car, I'm now less than three tenths behind. Uh, so gaining three tenths for free, catching right up and pulling away from the car behind, all in the same moment. So things going to plan so far in this one, which is good. On uh, the beginning of lap number four, you can see I was a lot closer to Momo's. Keeping a good pace here, just five seconds off the lead. And not too inconsistent, actually, with the lap times. Picking up the inside, but not really going to go for that move from that far back. Into this chicane, you've got to be so careful, easy to get track limits, penalties. So if you're going to make a move, you've got to be sure about it. And there, I wasn't quite sure about it. It's easier to wait until the main straight here, which we are now going on to. Because this is the... You know, this is the most surefire way to get a move done. In the slipstream, pull out to the side. You don't really have to do it on the brakes. You just get the move done. It's actually very simple to do it there. Just to wait for it at that moment. So we're going to tuck in ahead. Yep, up into P7. And uh, it's a 1.3 it's a, it's a second gap to the car in front. So we're going to take the racing line here on the way into the chicane. Momo's backs out. And we can take the apex. You have to commit a lot of speed on the way in. Carry the speed in. Carry it all the way through, get on the exit, get on the power, on the exit nice and early. Uh, lap number five, I was keeping just just about keeping touch with this uh, with these drivers in front, but I just didn't quite have the pace. We were basically level on pace, myself and the car in front, and maybe the one in front of them. But I just couldn't quite garner the pace to do it myself to get uh, to catch up. But I noticed that Will Murdoch was catching up just behind, and I felt like maybe if he could get in front. And, you know, he, sh he normally shows very good pace and we could perhaps tuck into the slipstream, work with him, try to catch up with the group in front. So I moved over to the side, gave him the tow, and then you see him overtaking uh, Momos just behind. So a bit of tactical play there to try to bring through the faster player. Yes, all, all right, I might have to lose a position here. Sometimes you've got to lose one to gain one. Uh, so I'm going to let him go through. On this occasion, I'm actually going to lose one to lose one um, because... <laughs> He goes through on the inside, then Momos goes through as well. So I've actually lost two positions. So that was actually a tactical blunder, you could say. Although, still think about the long game. Uh, Murdoch goes through. We could still tuck into his slipstream if we work together. Momos getting a, a slow exit there. Off of the chicane. Up the inside. And retake the position. Now, I just need to stay within slipstream range here. And then we might be able to work together. I'm still eyeing up that P6, but it's not going to be easy. This is, again, testament to the difficulty of this lobby. I felt like by this point in the session, I was quite comfortable with this track and car combination after not being too comfortable, especially through the chicane. Um, but you see here, myself and Will, we're really pushing, and he gets a, a one-second penalty, and I'm also going to get a penalty, a 1.5-second penalty, in fact, for cutting both apexes off the chicane. We were both pushing really going for it i suppose you might as well go for it um but the unfortunate result of that is that now momos comes back into the picture we actually managed to drop him as a group myself and will uh, but now momos comes back with a vengeance to lead this mini group of cars now it looks like this is really going to be a battle for seventh now 
as the top six have just, you know, they've just got away there a little bit too much. It's probably too much work to try to get back into that coveted P6 position, which we all love. Well, which I love. Down into the chicane. Will Murdoch oh, the ins up the inside. Good move. Momo weirdly fights it. And then Will Murdoch has a Momo's experience, Monza edition. Bit of a weird move that from Momo. And uh, it really is just the enigma. It really does kind of. It really does show the enigma that is Momo's. Which is that he can race just fine, which he was doing for the most, most part in this race. And then sometimes he just has that brain fart and just wants to push you off the track. Now we're going to go past him here. This is lap number 10 and regain P7. And this is where the titanic battle between Super GT and Momos is truly going to begin. As we head into the big braking zone here, look for the 150 board. Momos backs out and we're going to take the position. So with two and three quarter laps to go, it's hotting up here for this position. We're not going to really get we're not going to get anything better, I'd say, than P7. Uh, you know, unless any of those top six fancy just smashing themselves off into barrier. You can't really rely on that. You can't really rely on that again. The standard was high, and um, that wasn't likely to happen. Trying to break the toe here, using every little trick in the book to break the toe and give him as little slipstream as possible. And you see there managed to convince him to go over to the wrong side of the track in terms of slipstream so he didn't really gain anything on me there so let's see if we can get a scary dead right and uh, that wasn't too bad actually i'll take that although not quite seven temps ahead he is right on the fringes of slipstream just trying to break the toe not quite able to do it he's six temps behind if i could take a scary dead right then i'd be okay but this is the end of lap 11 going on to lap 12 the final lap of the race Let's have a look how this one plays out because I wasn't able to break the toe. He's three tenths behind. Will Murdoch a couple of tenths behind him, maybe a second or so. But this is this is going to be difficult to over uh, to to defend. It's very difficult to defend such a slipstream run that someone can get on you. So I'm going to move to the right hand side, forcing him to the outside of Curva Grande. The downside here is that he now is the inside for the chicane coming up. So it's a hard decision to make sometimes going into there which side to defend and on this occasion turns out to be the wrong side uh, I might have been overtaken either way but let's try to get back past him Momos goes through we're back down to P8 and it's actually a very good battle here between the two of us so I'm going to try and do this one nice and fairly as he has played ball so far with me on the exit of Lesmo 2 he actually gets a really good run we're in the split stream though so we can still get a chance here to try to catch up we do have to mind Will Murdoch who is just a few tenths behind so it could go either way. I could gain 7th. I could stay in 8th. I could go to ninth. Everyone in the top 6 could crash and then I could finish P2. Everyone in the top 6 could crash and then I overtake Momos and I could win. You know, there's so many possibilities of things that could happen. Um, you know, the game could disconnect. Endless possibilities here. Momos covers the inside. I look for the inside. He definitely wants to cover it. I'm going to keep him there as long as possible. Then go to the outside. I'm going to try something here. It's not quite going to work. We're going to go for the switcheroo, but the switcheroo was denied as Will Murdoch was sort of half up the inside and I couldn't quite get the job done. So ultimately, after all of that, it's going to be a P8. But um, it was actually a really good battle, actually, there with Momos. Enjoyed it, and I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Have yourself an amazing day. And uh, if you are new to the channel, get yourself subscribed and uh, let me know your thoughts on this video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.